After completing schematic design in the previous tutorial, now it's time to import the electronic component to the PCB and start layout design process. So we are going to talk about board shape selection, optimized electronic component placement, interactive component routing and vias, polygon pour, ground plane, and stitching vias. We have got a PCB to design today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features. You can also join the electronic and mechanical design contest and win special prizes. So don't miss this chance. Okay, so apparently there were some components that does not have a footprint. I fixed that uh, problem and now I'm good to go. First of all, I will determine uh, the borders of the board and then I will place all the components within my board and then I will start routing. Alright, so the first step in a PCB layout design is determining the shape of the PCB that we are going to use and this is done by determining the boundaries of the PCB. Of course, I will be talking about that in details and how it's done uh, in a minute. So after determining the shape of the board, we need to start placing uh, the components that we are going to use in our PCB inside the area that we have determined. But before that, I want actually to remove the designators uh, from the over relay layer. And the over relay layer is actually everything printed on the PCB surface, like logos and legends. And actually, I prefer to see the designator of the components only when I access the properties uh, of that specific components, just like here. The way that I'm going to do that is that I'm going to select one of the designators and then uh, I will find similar objects. And here the string type will be designator and select same. And when I apply the uh, filter, uh, all the uh, same objects will be selected. So at this stage, I can move all uh, the designators to another mechanical layer uh, that won't appear uh, in my design. So uh, now, uh, as you can see, all the Legend has disappeared from my 3D design but not deleted. And of course I can always remove uh, this mechanical layer from my view uh, here in the view configuration. And then I can disable the uh, layer 15 mechanical. Uh, and also there's one more thing I prefer to use is to make all the tracks and pads uh, transparent. So to make things more clear uh, while uh, routing the components. Alright, so now I will proceed with the uh, component placement. It's actually always a good idea to keep an eye out on the uh, schematics of the PCB during the component placement because you need to put the related components uh, close to each other. So I'll take this capacitor as an example. Uh, this capacitor first uh, pin is connected to 5 volt and the other pin is connected to ground. So actually this component can be placed anywhere in the board. But the purpose of it is to make it as close as possible uh, to this battery charging circuit. By doing so, you will be actually making the routing process much easier because the related pads will be close to each other and you will be using uh, shorter uh, traces to connect them. Alright, so here I've uh, completed uh, placing the components that I'm going to use uh, in my board. And here's the 3D view. So the way of defining the uh, boundaries of the board is to draw a shape using the keep out layer. And then you can select the boundary of the board that you are going to use. So here I can use this shape in order to define my uh, board boundary. So let's try doing that. Uh, I need to go to design and then board shape define board shape from selected object. So now this is going to be my board and the rest will be ignored. As you can see, this is the PCB board that's uh, selected. Okay, so now I'll start uh, the routing process of all the components. It is possible to connect your electronic component 
using traces either over the top layer or the bottom layer and in order to connect uh, traces between layers you are going to use vias vias are nothing but conductive holes in your board Alright, so now after uh, completing the routing process, now I need to define a polygon uh, on my board so I can uh, generate the ground plane uh, on the bottom and the top layer. Uh, and I can do that by selecting the keep out layer like this. Uh, by the way, you can uh, select the whole line uh, that has the same net uh, using the tab button. So after selecting the keep out layer, I can select the layer where I want to generate the uh, polygon pour. Of course, first let me enable the uh, polygon view. I have already generated the polygon on the bottom side. Uh, so now I'm going to generate it on the top side. So first I'll go to tools uh, and then convert. And here I will select create polygon from selected primitives. All right, so now I have the polygon uh, generated. Now I need to change its type to solid and then I will select the uh, net as ground and then I need to activate this option this option will allow the polygon to pour over all uh, the traces that has the same net uh, as the polygon which actually makes sense uh, and then of course I want to remove the uh, dead copper uh, parts which will not be connected to any uh, net okay so I will need to report the polygon and yeah here we go uh, and now since i have a uh, ground plane on both uh, the top layer and the bottom layer and uh, now i can uh, stitching vias and this can be done from again the tool and from via stitching i can add stitching vias to a specific net so again i will uh, choose the the ground plane because this is where i have uh, my polygon and here i will choose the dimensions of the uh, hole and this parameter will determine the spacing between uh, every via. So I think one millimeter is enough, or it's maybe two enough. So, okay, so now uh, we have added 260 stitching vias to our ground plane. And this is how uh, the board looks like right now. You can, of course, uh, always modify uh, the settings of the uh, via grid that we have added. So this is the space between every via. Uh, there's actually one important option that I forgot to mention uh, in the tools in the via stitching part. So here I have activated uh, this option. It's about the solder mask expansion. Uh, by activating this option, you will actually allow uh, the solder mask to cover all the vias that you have added over this grid. So uh, let me show what I mean when I go to the 3D view. So as you can see now, all my vias are covered like this and they are not exposed, which actually I prefer doing. All right, so now we can say that our design has almost completed, but of course we need to add some legends uh, and logos to our PCB and then export the fabrication files to send them to the PCB manufacturer. But this is the topic of the upcoming tutorial, which is going to be the last tutorial in this hardware design tutorial series. So stay tuned for that and bye bye.